Hi, and welcome to chapter seven, product selling strategies that add value. So there's a lot of text here, and as usual, I will give you as much information as possible. And if you have any questions, this is why we do this. Uh, this is called flipping. If you um, look at this and you have any questions, uh, please record them and, or write them down, I should say, and you, we can share your question or your answers, my answers uh, afterwards. All right. So let's go to so here, uh, learning objectives, describing position as a product strategy. And we're not going to do everything in this chapter, explain the 3D product solutions. Yes. Uh, discuss product positioning, explain how to sell your product. All of this will look in this chapter. So like I said, there's a lot of information here. And so listen attentively. Product positioning in a competitive marketplace. This is certainly called positioning decisions and activities intended to create and maintain a certain conception of the firm's product in the customer's mind. So this must be continually modified to match customers changing needs and wants. So if you look around you, you'll see that a lot of companies do this and you can see that Apple has just done this again uh, with their latest uh, iPhone SE latest version. Uh, they need that position in the marketplace and that's the way they always continually modify it and update it because there's always a demand for it. So it requires developing a marketing strategy aimed at influencing how um, mar particular market segments perceive a product in comparison to the competition. Again, it's always about placement. It's always about the competition, how to be better than them. So means the product's name, reputation and niche are always recognized if this is done well. All right, so a salesperson's role in product differentiation. Uh, again, here's a lot of uh, def definitions. And again, uh, there won't be a quiz tonight, or if there is, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I am, but I'm just not going to tell you. Um, they certainly will uh, always uh, be around the definitions. So we have differentiation, ability to separate yourself and your product from that of your competition or your competitors. This is where it makes you above and beyond uh, anybody else. So this is what I always strive. So now you're, if you have an, you're in a competition, uh, you certainly want to differentiate yourself to better yourself and make yourself exceptional by doing that, right? So on quality, price, and convenience, economy, or other factors, key to building and maintaining a competitive edge, certainly. So custom fitting and communicating the value proposition. Again, here's another uh, definition, value proposition. A set of benefits and values that companies promises to deliver to customers to satisfy their need. Best if quantified and especially true with business buyers. So if you have buyers here, it's always about value because you want to make the buyer look good. Absolutely. The buyer always has to look good in front of his bosses. So you always don't want to uh, sell him short. You want to bring as much value as possible. All right. So the 3D product solutions, it's all about satisfactions. We'll get to that in a second. So it's the positive benefits that customers seek uh, when making a purchase. This arises from the product itself and the company and also the sales. Uh, here it says salesperson. I like to say sales rep or sales representative. We'll, we'll go with sales rep who sells and services the product. The sales rep is always uh, the front man of a company. And it's always very important that a sales rep has enough initiative to satisfy the customer. So here is a 3D uh, product solutions model. You've got today's products, today's salespersons, and today's companies. So what it's all about? Well, it's knowledge helps you achieve product differentiation. It makes you understand what the competition is all about because the competition is always good. Always. You always want the competition uh, to be good and always try to make you better and prepare an effective value proposition. So be careful not to use technical jargon when you talk to your customers and certainly you want them to understand, right? You're making a sales plan now. Eventually you're going to do a business plan. And once you do, you'll realize what's the most important thing, which is clarity. Uh, adverbs and adjectives, please uh, try to avoid them as much as possible and in your sales plan. 
product positioning strategies, the sales rep can position you and emerging products versus mature and well-established products. The sales rep always has that initial initiative of bringing the good news to a customer when it comes to new products. Uh, I remember all the time about that, bring, bringing new ideas a company has where if you do it right, the, comp the uh, buyer will certainly uh, uh, be on your side and be in a position to pass that information to their, comp to their boss and make them look good. Right, position products with price strategies, position products with value added strategies. Uh, this is all about strategies and selling. Uh, selling new products versus well-established products. Here we look at uh, a product life cycle. We've looked at this in the past. I think you have an understanding of what this is. It goes from introduction all the way to withdrawal and it's stages of a product from time it is first introduced into the market. So selling new product versus well-established products. Uh, nature and extent of each stage are determined by several factors. The product's perceived advantage over or available over, I apologize, available substitutes. The product's benefits and importance of needs it fulfills and competitive activity. Also, it changes more and more in today's world when it comes to technology. So, selling new products, again, if you look at new and emerging products versus mature and well-established products, it's all about time, product selling strategy, uh, versus another product. You can see how this is developed in this model. Okay, continue. So selling products with a pricing strategy or a price strategy. First steps in establishing price is to determine the firm's uh, pricing objective. Certainly it's all about policy. You don't want to go above and beyond what the company wants to do. You always want to follow what the company is. So they're certainly always looking to maximize profits obtain market share and reflect the product position in the product life cycle. So this is really important for a basic for every company out there or pretty much every company out there. Uh, we looked at transactional selling tactics. Uh, if you emphasize low price, uh, here is quantity discounts and seasonal discounts. So it's, you have a quantity discount says what's the, exactly what it says there is the amount on discounts and also seasonal if depending on what season you buy the product, the prices are adjusted. Also, uh, promotional allowance, uh, big big cost uh, loss when I when I think of it as uh, as whenever you have promotional pricing, it's all about losing money, and certainly you don't want you want to avoid this as much as possible. But in a lot of cases, you can't. Trade or functional discount, and also unbundled features. When you have mixed bundling, and I think we looked at this mixed bundling uh, versus uh, other types of bundling, this reduces the price uh, with the removal of some elements of the, of the solution. Uh, big problems with this uh, certainly uh, is if you look at the questions that are there, are you selling too high or low involvement buyers? Uh, it depends on the buyer is looking at you and how, what kind of a strategy he has. How important is quality in the minds of buyers? Again, it all comes up from the top to the end. By the time it gets to the buyer, uh, they've gotten a message from their uh, board that what they're looking for is to cut costs or to have a higher quality product. So how important is service to them? It should be important to you. So electronic business on pricing. Uh, salespeople who are involved primarily in transactional selling add little or no value to the sales transaction and will often not be able to compete with online vendors. Uh, certainly there's no face to, to the transaction, there's no voice, it's, uh, it's an Amazon online transaction. Certainly um, the sales, sales rep has nothing to do with it. So how do customers judge service quality? Uh, they're selling an action, they're looking at what is tangible, in other words, what do they get, what could they feel, uh, how reliable are you, how responsive are you in a situation, how is your after sales service, and what kind of assurance can you give them that they'll get exactly what you're saying, and how important that is for if you to come through. And you always have to show empathy and understand what the customer is looking for. You need to listen with big ears and have uh, an understanding of what they're looking for. 
Let's keep going. So selling your product uh, with a value added strategy can add value to your product. This improves knowledge of a customer's needs, uh, builds stronger relationships, and the use of sales technologies certainly gives better delivery at times, can, and also after sales service, and can also show a, or offer, I should say, a unique uh, comp a competitive or a niche edge above your competition. So we're almost down to the end, so let's stretch it all out. So the value added product selling model if you look at this, a generic product is a starting point, the basic substantive, substantive product being sold, and it goes there from, to, from product, which is generic, to expected product, to value-added product, all the way on the outer circle, you've got their potential product. So this is something you should know, just in case we have a quiz, just in case. If we don't have the quiz today, um, we will certainly have one in the near future. Uh, here we go. So expected product, everything that represents the customer's minimal expectations. So if we just go back, generic product is a starting point. Then you've got expected product, everything that represents the customer's minimal expectations. I would think that these definitions you would need to know. Uh, value added product, product that exists when salespeople or sales reps offer the customer more than they expect. This is the wow feeling. Then you've got potential product. What may remain to be done to a product? What is, that is what is possible. So this is really important about what can you do more that the customer might be looking for. So this is really, really important in sales, especially in B2B. In other words, you never give the customer everything that you have on, in your mind or possibly you always keep something behind. I know I've, I've made that mistake when I was a younger uh, a sales rep and gave everything to the customer and then I realized I had nothing else to give and I was left out in the dark because I had given everything in one loop. So you've got to be very careful with that and keep something uh, stashed in your mind or in your uh, set of uh, sales tactics. So just to finish off, uh, again, value creation investments. Uh, there's three of them. We've done this transactional sale consultative sale and strategic alliance sale. So you've got them all there. And uh, that is this chapter. And this is chapter seven. See you all soon.